In this tutorial, you will learn how to use and set up HDRI time lapses in Blender 3.0. First, head over to hdrmaps.com. Next, go to the freebie subpage and find free HDRI sky time lapse. You can download whole sequence of 300 maps for free and use it as you want. It's not so easy to shoot and to stitch HDRI time lapses, even if you have access to powerful computer. So please don't forget to credit me somehow. Thanks. Click on direct download button to open Mediafire website. Downloading 16 gigabytes file can take some time. Yes, it's bit heavy, but no worries. Blender reads only one frame at the time and each frame has resolution of 10,000 on 5,000 pixels. Go to your downloads directory and unzip it to new folder. You should find all 300 EXR files inside. Let's jump now to the Blender. Edit shader nodes from world. With Node Wrangler add-on enabled, select a background node and use Ctrl plus T shortcut to add texture setup. Navigate to unzip directory. To select all visible files in the current directory, press A key. Click open image to load all HDRI files. Wait few seconds and don't click anything, otherwise Blender will crash. You should see now an environment texture node displaying number of total frames. You can set your project to any frame rate you want. I set my project to 25 frames per second, so whole sky animation will last 12 seconds. Let's display render preview to see how our setup works under cycles. I am using shortcuts, shift plus left arrow to go to the beginning of animation and shift plus right arrow to go to the end. You need to check the auto refresh option so it updates automatically. Now, first and the last frame of animation will be our so-called hero frames. We will try to tweak HDRI lighting looking at those two frames. Looks like it's a little bit too dark. So let's increase a background strength from 1 to 2.5. Just before, I will add RGB curves node for color correction. I am using Scatter 5 and Botanique add-ons for vegetation in my test scene. From my own experience, I know that most of this type assets are adding too much green tint to the composition. I can fix it by going to every asset's material and tweak its color tint, but I am too lazy for this. To introduce more red, I will slightly elevate a red's channel curve of my environment, and that should be fine enough, as you can see. Let's set up rendering file output. Usually, I set my output to 16-bit TIFF files when rendering animations, which gives me some flexibility for post-production later on. LZW compression is not that effective as ZIP, but is few times faster to write and to read, so I recommend you to choose this one. My animation has just started to render, it will need some tweaks in the post-production software anyway. When it goes to post-production software, After Effects is just great. I still have the latest version available for one-time purchase, the problem is that it's very old software, and doesn't recognize my new RTX 3090 GPU card. If you don't like to pay every month for After Effects, like me, I highly recommend you to try a free Hit Film Express. I have imported my already rendered sequence to the Hit Film and added two grading layers. First one is an auto color effect, blended with original at 70%. Second grading layer has a curve effects with slightly pushed mids. I hope that you have enjoyed my short tutorial. Like it or not, Subscribe to my channel or not, actually, I don't care, because I am just a robot. Feel free to visit hdrmaps.com, to find some nice HDRI maps for your 3D projects. Bye bye.